Hi guys, welcome back to the JPM Performance Channel. Today we're going to talk about getting ready to go to the racetrack, loading and organizing your trailer, how to stay organized. Um, if you've been watching some of my videos, you know that I'm really big about organization in the shop, and for me, that transfers into my trailer and how I do things at the track. So the most important thing that I do is have a checklist. I know that you can all... A lot of people like to think that they can remember pretty much everything, but believe me, you can't. And so let's check out my checklist and uh, you get an idea of kind of how I stay organized and then we'll go into the trailer and take a look. So as you can see here, what I've come up with over the years is a very simple checklist and I, and I just keep this on a, uh, a Word file on my, on my computer and I will update it as needed. Sometimes I'll change things, but you can see everything that's on here. I, I, I put it in alphabetical order, but you, you don't have to. It doesn't really matter. Um, you know, starting with the battery charger, coming down through things like brake clean, brake fluid, brake pads, um, all the way down to even the simple stuff like a clutch alignment tool. If you have to pull your transmission at the track, you're going to need a clutch alignment tool. Fluids, fuel, engine oil, you know, even jack stands. Make sure your jack stands are in good shape. Make sure your jack is working. Um, I keep nitrogen in my trailer uh, instead of using air. I don't really do the whole, you know, purge your tires and use nitrogen. But what I do do is I've got a couple of different um, water control features in my shop that filter out as much water as possible. And so that has worked really good for me. I just use nitrogen in the trailer for a number of different things. Filling up tires, checking shock canister pressures, make sure your radios are charged, make sure you have things like rivets, rotors, silicone, spark plugs, basically everything that you need. Something else that you always want to check on your first time out, make sure your registration is up to date, make sure you have insurance for your rig. So that's kind of where we start. And then I go to the trailer. Let's check out the trailer. So what I have is a very simple trailer. It's a 28 foot feather light, nothing special. It's over 20 years old, but it does everything that I need and I keep it very, very organized. So what we'll do here is we'll just kind of start at the back and work our way forward. Uh, I have very simple places to keep all of my ratchet straps. Um, these weights down here are to hold down the canopy. When you're from Kansas, what you, what you uh, learn is that uh, the wind is always blowing. So you can see I have two spare trailer tires. I have a bottle jack for emergencies. Make sure all of your tires are up to pressure, not just the ones on the trailer, but your spares as well. I have a nice jack for at the track. This is a little ramp that I use what you can do if you get a, if you do get a flat, if you have a dual axle trailer, you can simply pull that up onto the act tire next to it, and very easily change tires. So that's kind of a little trick that I've come up with. See, so I've got a nice tire rack. I've got all my tires. All of my canopy poles are nested inside of the here. So you just these are just big pieces of PVC, and I have caps on them. So all of the poles are in here. This is uh, something that I don't always use, but it is two big pieces of plywood plus a little one that goes in between. A lot of times, you know, especially as club racers, we go to race tracks that you have to park in the grass. Well, jacking up your car in the grass is a real pain and it can actually be very dangerous. So I actually, this is big enough so I can pull my car on there and I can also put the jack on there and the jack stands and everything so it's very safe. Moving forward, this is a big bottle of nitrogen that I was talking about. Um, I've had this one bottle in here for years and years. If you don't use it a whole lot, it'll last a long time. I've obviously got my Sunoco race fuel loaded up, ready to go. Um, I'm a big adamant, uh, I'm very adamant about bringing my own fuel to the track. Why is that? It's a control thing. I know that this fuel came out of the exact same drum that I dynoed the car on. 
and I know that it's perfect. I know that I'm not going to rely upon the racetrack. There's a couple things that can happen to you at a racetrack. I've been at tracks where they've run out of fuel. I've also been at tracks where their fuel was slightly contaminated. That can really be detrimental to your entire race program, engine, all of the above. I've got a great little shop vac that I like to use to vacuum out the car. Uh, after every day, you know, it's these cars get dirt and grass and all sorts of nasty stuff in them. So while I'm at the track, I plug the trailer in with, I, this is just a little Honda 2000 generator, but it will run all the lights. It'll charge all of my batteries. It'll basically do everything I do, run the outside lights if I need to work at night. So having a nice little generator like this is very, very important in my life. So moving back over here, you can see I've got lots of extra fluids. What if you have to change your engine oil at the track? Or what if you, you know, I've got transmission fluid, differential oil, pretty much everything that I might need if I'm at the track and I need to change fluids. So I know a lot of guys will use totes. Um, I really enjoy having cabinets that you can get everything put away. So. What I've got in here is all sorts of stuff. We'll get a little closer look here so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about is this toolbox. So this toolbox, and I know that Sears doesn't really sell Craftsman anymore, but these are not maybe the absolute best tools in the world but I only use these at the track. This toolbox is bolted to the floor and I have everything in here for at the track. All the sockets and wrenches and ratchets and everything you could really need for all sorts of, you know, needing to work on the car. And I've added to it over the years as I've needed to. And uh, so I think that's a really important part of uh, rolling your tools to the track. I used to put my big toolbox in the trailer and you'd get to the track and everything was completely destroyed. Everything was out of place. Of course, someone like me, I like everything in its place. So up here, we've got a bleed bottle, we've got some brake clean, um, dial hand soap. This is not for washing your hands. This is actually what I use. I have found this the best to be an anti-fog deterrent you know we have to race in the rain sometimes and if you're even if you're in an open car i will use this on the inside of my visor and then buff it with one of these blue towels you can do the same thing on the inside of your enclosed car i'll tell you it works better than a blower system it really really deters fog so down in the cabinets we've got all sorts of stuff not, you're not going to be able to see everything, but you see I've got a winch to pull the car in. I've got good jack stands. Back in here, I have all sorts of spares, rotors, brakes. And way back in here is even more good stuff. So, you know, I know where everything's at, and everything has its place. This is where I keep my canopy. And then looking up through the top, a uh, little pro tip of the day, get yourself some towels like this. These are awesome for washing your hands. You just pop it up, pull one out, wash your hands, throw it away. You don't have to worry about having water to wash your hands. Works really good. Here's another little tricky trick that some of you probably have seen. This is just a curry comb for a horse. A uh, long time ago, a guy from Texas turned me on to this. And after a session or at the end of the day, you can actually scrape your tires get all of the excess rubber and rocks and things off. This is something that I really, really use all the time. Of course, you want to make sure you have duct tape, gaffer's tape. Up here, I've got, this is where I keep my radios, a spare starter. These are all sorts of nuts and bolts in here. Moving on, battery charger, all of my, this is where I keep my log book. And all of my information, I've got some oil filters. You can see there's tow plates and all sorts of goodies. I've got a tire groover, which doesn't get used very often, but if you've ever had the need for a tire groover, you know why. If, uh, if, if it's starting to sprinkle and you've got some dry tires, you can very easily groove them at the track and have like a, a medium tire. It's a, what do they call those? Intermediates. So 
Now, this is how I stay organized. A very simple composition book. This book has everything in it for every track that I've ever been to. And I will keep notes throughout the weekend. This, is, this was obviously my winter list. And then we go through the alignment specs for the season. And here I've already started. Our first race is going to be Road Atlanta. So I'm taking a stab at where I think my starting tire pressures will be. And we'll go from there. And I'll keep all of my information for the weekend on this page. Now the next page is going to be my prep page for the next race. The next race I'm going to is at pit race. So I already, I already have one thing on there that I know I want to do after Road Atlanta, but it was not something that was critical to get done before um, this first race. So the other thing that I have in this trailer, which is connected to the battery that actually runs the electric hoist, is some battery-powered LEDs. Now, why do I really need these tiny little, little LEDs? If you're going down the road and it's in the middle of the night and you need to come into your trailer and just check things out, you don't really have good light. So if you've got just these little LEDs, there's not that many of them, but in the, in the darkness, they really light things up. So that's something else that I would suggest if you, uh, if you ever do a lot of night traveling. And if you're a racer, believe me, I know you do some night traveling. So that's kind of the way I do things and the way I organize my trailer. Now I've got in this 28 foot trailer, I've got room for my golf cart. You can see because I'm bringing so many tires this weekend, I've got my rain tires in the back of the golf cart here. Um, a lot of guys, you know, on their golf carts, they have those rear seats. I opted for this little bed and the tires fit just perfect. I've always got some stuff that I'm taking for people. So I've got some used tires I'm taking, a spoiler for a guy. And of course the car is 100% prepped and ready to go. So now all we have to do is get the golf cart and get the car in and get loaded up and we'll be looking good. So you can see if you, if you have a spot for everything, it's very easy to stay organized. And when you're at the racetrack, that's as important as when you're working in the shop. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have any comments, um, I'm always interested in hearing comments or opinions. Always interested in answering questions about anything you might have. I always am uh, very, very curious about looking in other people's trailers, learning about what they do. There's tons of great ideas for trailer organization and uh, being able to bring your, your program up to a higher level which always computes to more success on the track. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you're having a great week. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of these videos. See you soon.